Hey STAT students, today we start talking about probability, okay? This is our intro to probability and uh, in this introduction we're going to be using Venn diagrams and contingency tables. So I guess one of the first questions we have to answer is, what is probability, okay? Well, probability is a numerical measurement between 0 and 1 of the likelihood of an event, okay? So if the probability is zero, that means not going to happen. If the probability is one, that means it is going to happen. And if the probability is 0.5, for example, that means it's equally likely that it will happen and it won't happen. Okay? Now we've talked about what random events are. Random events are events that we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Nobody knows what the outcome is going to be. You might have, you might know what the particular options are and you might have a good idea of what's probably going to happen, but you don't know exactly what's going to happen, okay? So each random event is associated with a probability like this, this numerical measurement. Another way to think about this numerical measurement is that it's the proportion of occurrences of, of an event that happen over the long run. And uh, which is probably going to bring up another question for you, which is, uh, what do you mean over the long run? What does that mean? Well. <clears throat> Let's say, let's say I, I, I flip a coin a whole bunch of times, okay? And, hey, here we go. Uh, I, I, I start flipping this coin, and I, I did this. I had some time on my hands, and I started flipping coins. And uh, here's the, the x-axis shows the uh, number of flips that I've made, and the y-axis shows the proportion of heads that I got. So at the beginning here, I was getting a whole bunch of heads, you know, after about... 10 or 15 flips, it looked like this was an unfair coin, that it was very likely I was going to get a head. And then I started getting more tails, and then after about, I don't know, about 40 or so flips, it looked like, shoot, it was uh, only about a one-third chance of getting a head and about a two-thirds chance of getting tails. So uh, what gives here? Well, what gives is I just haven't flipped it very much. It's, it's still very uh, volatile, very unstable. You just got to keep on flipping those heads. I haven't hit the long run yet. This is the short run. So keep on flipping, keep on flipping. After 100 flips, you can see it's a whole lot closer to 50%. And let's keep on flipping this. Here we are after about 100. This is where we were before. And as you can see, after several hundred, now it starts hovering right around 50%. And it never really leaves 50% after that. That's what over the long run means. After a while, the probabilities or the proportion kind of stabilizes. And that's what the probability is. That's how you tell if a coin really is fair or not, is by flipping it a whole bunch of times and then checking out that proportion. Okay, so that's what probability is. Uh, now, let's, uh, let's talk about how we, how we notate, how we write things down. Okay? P and then inside the parentheses, and then you write, we generally, we generally refer to events, that is the thing that you're, you're talking about, the probability of this occurring or not. We talk about events using capital letters or just like a short little word. Uh, and then we'll put that inside the parentheses here with a P in front of it. That means the probability of this event happening. Okay? So that's the, the probability that event A is going to happen. Okay? Like I said before, if that probability is 1, that means it's going to happen. If the probability is 0, it's not going to happen. No way is it going to happen. Somewhere in between 1 and 0? All right. Well, now, now it gets interesting. Uh, also want to mention, if you put this little superscript C here, this means the complement of A. What's the complement of A? The complement is, uh, is A not happening. Okay, that's what it is. So the probability of the complement of A means, what's the probability that A is not going to happen? Okay, that event A is not going to occur. And if you think about it, the probability of A occurring plus the probability of A not occurring has to be one, okay? If there's a 70% chance it's going to rain tomorrow, that means there's a 30% chance it's not going to rain tomorrow. A might be, it's going to rain, okay? So that means this would be 70%, this would be 30%, and of course it's got to equal one. It's got to equal 100%, okay? So, uh, let's look at an example here. We have this example. A student is chosen at random from a large school where 20% of the students play soccer and 63% of the students play a musical instrument, okay? So, I got this large school here, some are soccer players, some are musicians, and I just cover my eyes and randomly pick a student up, 
And uh, so I can I, I immediately have some uh, probabilities here. First off, let's let's define our events. Event S is going to be the student plays soccer. Event M is going to be the student plays a musical instrument. And so now I have these probabilities. The probability of event S happening is 0.2. Why is that? Well, because 20% of the students play soccer. And so, uh, and, and then since 63% of the students play a musical instrument, the probability of M happening is 0.63. Okay, so the probability of my particular student playing a musical instrument is 0.63. The probability of S not happening is 0 0.8, that's because it's 1 minus 0.2, and the probability of M not happening is 0.37, that's because it's 1 minus 0.63, okay? And you can, uh, uh, you can illustrate this really easily using our old buddy, the Venn diagram. So I draw my rectangle there, meaning all, all possible events, and I draw one circle here and another circle here, and this circle is going to be S, for soccer, and this circle is going to be M for musical instrument. And then I would look up at my probabilities and I'd say, okay, I got a 20% playing soccer, 63% playing musical instrument, all fine and good, right? No, wrong. Bad probabilities. You know why? Because I'm not thinking about this space right here. This is the space of students that play soccer who are also musicians. Aha, uh -huh. some are going to do both. So, and this space over here means it's the soccer players that don't play music, and this space over here means it's the musicians that don't play soccer. Well, of course, some are going to play both. So, uh, um, so that's really not good to put that there. So I need to know how many go in that, uh, in this intersection right here, and uh, so I need some more information. So, hey, there's more information. Hey, look at that. So 15% of the students play both. Now I can build my Venn diagram. I always start in the middle. Take that 15%, put it right there, okay? Now, what am I gonna put over here? What I'm gonna put over there is not 20%. Remember, this whole circle here has to have 20%. So if 15 of it is right there, that means five of it goes right there. And again, in this blue circle, <coughs> the whole circle has to have 63%. So if I have 15% of it there, that means I'm going to have 48% of it right there. So that way, together, they make 63%. Now, 5 plus 15 is 20, plus 48 is 68. This is only 68% of all the students in the school. That means there's still quite a few students who don't play soccer and don't play a musical instrument. I guess they spend their time doing something else. Where do I put them? Right there, okay? These 32% are just outside of these two groups. These numbers must add up to 100%. If they don't, then your Venn diagram is incomplete, okay? And you don't want an incomplete Venn diagram. You want a Venn diagram that completely describes your situation here. All right, uh, more notation. Here's the Venn diagram we just drew. Uh, and so what I have here is, is I have the probability of S and then I get this weird upside down U. That means and, okay? It also means intersection. It's the intersection of these two sets. So the probability that my student plays soccer and plays music is 0.15, 15%. The probability that my student plays soccer and doesn't play music is 5%, so 0.05. The probability that the student does not play soccer and does play music is uh, 48%. That's where that comes from. And finally, the probability that the student doesn't play soccer and doesn't play a musical instrument is 0.32, and that comes from right there. Okay. So this is how this is how we write out our probabilities. Uh, Venn diagram is not the only way that you can uh, you can model this situation. It's not the only way that you can illustrate or describe the situation. Uh, there's also the contingency table. Remember a long time ago in our first video, or maybe our second video, when we were talking about uh, the, the Titanic and how it was better to be a first class uh, passenger than a, than a uh, third class or crew passenger? And we made these tables. Okay, this is a table just like that. The only difference is this one has percentages. It's all relative instead of uh, uh, actual numbers. But it's the same idea. Uh, here we have uh, 
the musicians. So 63% of our, our school is people who play musical instruments. Here we have the complement of that set, so non-musicians. And here's the total. So this plus this has to equal that. This plus this is that. This plus this is this. And, uh, and then here we have our soccer players, our non-soccer players, and the total there. Okay? So this 63%, this is the total of all the musicians. This 20% is the total of all the soccer players. And then this 15% here of the soccer players that also play a musical instrument. Okay. Now, we've talked about this symbol here, the upside down U that means and. Well, now there's another symbol that I want to talk about, and that is the right side up U. Okay? Exact same symbol, it's just turned like this now. This means or. This is the union of the two sets. So the probability that the person plays soccer and plays a musical instrument. Uh-huh. Well, hold it. The probability... Oops. The probability that the person plays soccer or plays a musical instrument. So that means if you play soccer, you're in this group. If you play a musical instrument, you're in this group. If you do both, you're in this group. Okay? That probability is, well, I would just take my musicians who don't play soccer, my musicians who do play soccer, and my soccer players who don't play music, and I would just add those up, right? So I'm going to have 5% plus 15% plus 48%, and I get 68%. It's a pretty, pretty straightforward way of doing it, just adding these, okay? Or what I could do is I could look at this and say, well, it's everybody except the group that doesn't play either. And I already identified that group that doesn't play either as 32%. So that means I can just say it's 100% minus 32%, 68%, get the same answer. Or there's yet another way of, uh, of calculating this, and this is the one that, the, that I want to stress the most. Take the uh, probability of playing music, that is these two, two uh, numbers, the sum of these two numbers. Then add to it the probability of playing soccer, that is the sum of these two numbers. Okay? And then notice, you added these two plus these two. So that means you added that twice. So subtract it. So 20% plus 63% minus the 15%, and you still get 68%. Okay? And this is what's known as the addition rule. Okay? The probability of events A and B, this time I'm, I'm generalizing things. I'm not talking about soccer players and musicians. I'm just talking about two uh, events. Uh, the probability of A or B happening is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay? That's known as the addition rule. And if, perchance, A and B are disjoint or mutually exclusive events, then this thing right here is going to be zero. Disjoint events are two events that simply can't happen simultaneously. Okay? The obvious one is uh, I grab a student at random and that student is, uh, you know, one event would be the student is male and one event is the student is female. Can't be both. Uh, if, the, if the student simply cannot be both, that means the two events are, uh, are mutually exclusive or disjoint. You need to know both of these words, okay? Good vocabulary words. So, if the probability that both events occurring is zero, then they are mutually exclusive. That means that doesn't matter, and in that case, you just add up your probabilities, and that's the probability of either one of them happening. Okay? Now, let's look at... Oh! And, and of course, this is what your Venn diagram looks like in that situation. It's uh, really rather boring. Okay, let's look at one more uh, uh, example, and then we're done. There's a 25% chance that it's going to rain tomorrow. There's an 8% chance that I'm going to forget my wallet at home. And there's a 3% chance that I'm going to have a really bad day because both of those things are going to happen. Okay? Let's, uh, well, let's look at those uh, probabilities and let's draw ourselves, let, let's, let's illustrate it, make a, our Venn diagram. Uh, I'm going to start with the middle, the 3% chance of both of them happening. Oops, actually I'm going to start by, by, uh, uh, by labeling them. Here's my rain, here's my lack of a wallet. Now there's my 3%. And since there's a 25% chance it's going to rain, and I, three of it is right there, that means the other 22 has to be right there. And since there's an 8% chance I'm going to forget my wallet, and three of it is right there, that means the other five, where is it? It has to be right there. And uh, we'll notice that 
Uh, 25 plus 5 is only 30 percent, so that means the other 70 percent has to be over here. These are good days. Days when it's not raining and I have my wallet. Ha! Love those days. Okay, so, uh, so there's our Venn diagram. That, that pretty well explains the situation. And uh, so let's put it up there. And let's also show that we can draw a table that will uh, uh, illustrate this. Here's, I forget my wallet. Here's that it's raining 3% of the time. That corresponds with that. Uh, here's the 8% that corresponds with our whole blue circle, the, the, the wallet circle. The 3 and the 5 come from there. The 3 and the 22 come from right there. That's our, our column for uh, uh, the uh, probability that it's going to rain. So you see how this works, right? And there's the 70% that, that corresponds with that. Now, there's a 8% uh, chance that I'm going to forget my wallet, right? Okay? Now, what this means when I write this, uh, this probability, this means that I've, I've drawn a W and then a little line here and R. This means I'm going to assume that it's a rainy day, okay? If I assume that it's a rainy day, then the probability of my, uh, of my forgetting my wallet, let's think about this. I'm assuming it's a rainy day, so that means these things aren't gonna happen. I'm just looking at my red circle down, okay? Now what's the probability of my forgetting my wallet? Well, it's three out of a possible 25%. 0.03 divided by 0.25, which ends up being 0.12. Or if I'm using a table, I would look over here and say, I'm assuming it's going to rain. So I'm not looking at this, I'm not looking at this, I'm only looking at this column right here. 3 out of a possible 25 is 12%. What does that mean? It means that if it's raining, I'm slightly more likely to forget my wallet. Hmm. And what that means is, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, let's also look at the probability of my forgetting my wallet if it's not raining. So now I'm just looking at this column, and I have 5 out of 75. Or I would ignore the red circle and just look outside the red circle and say 5 out of these two, the sum of those two. And that's about 7%, actually slightly less than 7%. Um, so if it is raining, I'm slightly more likely to forget my wallet. If it's not raining, raining, I'm slightly less likely to forget my wallet. And that means these two events are not independent of one another. Okay? Rain and forgetting the wallet. They are not independent of one another because the outcome of one influences the probability of the other. Okay? I don't know how it influences. And, and let's, let's be careful here. I'm not saying it causes the other one to happen. I'm saying that if I know the outcome of one of them, then the probability of the other one happening is, is, uh, is, is changed, it's affected, okay? So, uh, I don't know, maybe if it rains, I'm, I, if I'm thrown off my rhythm and I'm more likely to forget something, I really don't know. Or, hey, here's an idea. Maybe on days when I forget my wallet, it's more likely to rain. Maybe I can change the weather. <laughs> Except that association doesn't imply causation, so never mind. Um, really, we don't know why this is happening. All we know is there's an association. And if there's an association, they are not independent of one another. In order for this to be, in order for these two events to be independent, this would have to be 2% instead of, uh, instead of 3%. And so that way, 2% out of, uh, let's see, yeah. 2% out of 8% would still be 25%, and so that means that, uh, uh, that, that whether or not I forgot my wallet, there would still be a 25% chance of rain, and uh, uh, whether or not uh, it's raining, I would still have a 2% chance, no, I'm, I'm sorry, there, I would still have an 8% chance of uh, forgetting my wallet, because 2 out of 25 would be 8%. Um, so, uh, so, this is an important uh, an important topic here, and that is whether two uh, uh, random variables are, or, or two events are independent of one another or not. Okay? This notation and the idea of independence we're going to talk a lot more about in the next video, and the next video is about conditional probability. Okay? So I will see you then.